This is the Sony 11mm f1.8 and this is the Viltrox 13mm f1.4 and we are shooting on the ZV-E10. As you saw in the video thumbnail, we're going to be vlogging with both of these lenses to see which one you like better. We came out to this nature preserve because it's just a great place to film. And we're going to talk about the pros and cons between both of these lenses, but before we get started, this ultra wide Sony lens is so wide that if I take it any further than arm's length, which it is right now, then it might be too wide. So it's 16.5 millimeters full frame equivalent. And we're at 20 millimeters full frame equivalent with the Viltrox lens, which to me at arm's length seems like the perfect frame. We'll be switching back and forth throughout this video between these two lenses so that you can have a good idea of what both of them look like. But we're not only gonna vlog, we're gonna talk about price, weight, focal length, astrophotography, and other features of both of these lenses. The Sony lens is so light, when you do arm's length vlogging like this, it makes it super easy. It's probably because it's plastic. I think it comes in at about 181 grams. And the Viltrox lens comes in at 420 grams, which is a big difference and you can definitely feel it at the end of your arm. Maybe it's because the Viltrox lens is metal, but I do like that you can actually hold on to the Viltrox lens while you're vlogging. Whereas with the Sony lens, you kind of just have to hold a little bit of the body and the lens at the same time because it's just that small. But the real thing that makes the Viltrox more desirable than the Sony lens is that you can bring the aperture down to f1.4. So just take a look at that background with that f1.4 and now I'll show you what the Sony looks like at its fastest aperture which is f1.8. And this is the Sony's widest aperture which is f1.8. As you can see, the background's still pretty blurry, but not as blurry as that f1.4 that you get with the Viltrox. The Viltrox lens doesn't have any buttons on the outside, but it does have a nice aperture ring, which is super smooth. The Sony lens does have a couple buttons on the outside, which makes it nice. It has a focus hold button and also an autofocus, manual focus toggle switch. All right, back to the inside. I wasn't made for the outdoors. These mosquitoes are eating me up. By the way, the mic that I'm using on the ZV-E10 is the Kamika VM10, which is awesome because it requires no power. So literally just throw it into your camera bag when you're ready to shoot with it. And also the cool thing is it comes with a little wind muff. So when it's windy out, you won't hear those puffs from the wind. Another cool thing about it not requiring power is you don't have to worry about charging it. So you could just throw it in your camera bag and just connect it to your camera and go when it's time to start shooting. Here's what my audio sounds like if I didn't have that Comica mic hooked up to my camera so you can see how much of a difference that little microphone makes. All right, so now we're back inside. Another desirable thing of the Viltrox lens is that it goes for about $430. And the Sony lens is going for $550. So they're both reasonably priced, but the Viltrox still beats out the Sony when it comes to price. Now let's talk about autofocus. I'm shooting in 4K24 and I have eye detection set to on on the ZV-E10. And my focus mode is that little square that sits in the middle of the display. It's called center focus. So that anything that's in the center of the display will focus. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly duck down and we're gonna see how fast the ZV-E10 and the Viltrox lens together can connect with that focus. So same thing with the Sony lens, I'm not sitting any further away from the camera than I was with the Viltrox lens. But this is kind of like a good frame to show how much wider the Sony lens actually is. But let's take a look how fast the autofocus is. So as you can see, they're both lightning fast, but I do think that the Sony has an edge when it comes to autofocus and focus breathing. Now I do want to talk about vignetting because whenever you're dealing with ultra wide lenses, sometimes you get some vignetting on the outside of the frame. But with the Viltrox 13 millimeter F1.4, when I'm wide open, I don't really see that much vignetting. Whereas the Sony does have some vignetting going on when you shoot with 
bright backgrounds, and when you're shooting wide open, right now at f1.8. I'm also shooting in all different areas so that you can see what these lenses look like, and I'm only using natural lighting, you know, from windows and maybe like the lampshade and, and things like that, so that we can have a good idea of how these lenses look, maybe in like a real vlogging environment. Now, up until now, I've had active stabilization set to on with the ZV-E10 because I didn't have a gimbal with me and I wanted to see how the footage looked when I was walking and when I was standing still and on a tripod. But now I'm gonna turn it off so that we can see how wide this lens truly is without any stabilization that punches in. So here's the Viltrox lens and you can see what a big difference that makes when you don't have active stabilization set to on. So. In my opinion, if I wanted to use this lens more often as a vlogging lens, then I would probably just throw it up onto a gimbal. Now let's take a look at the Sony 11 millimeter lens to see how wide that actually goes. So now with active stabilization set to off, you can see how wide this lens truly is. And this is what I was talking about before when I said, if you go arm's length, it's almost too wide. So you almost wanna kind of bring it in a little bit, which is kind of nice. But at the same time, it is an ultra wide lens and when you have active stabilization set to off, that's when you're really gonna start to see a lot more of that vignetting. Now I have active stabilization set back to on in the ZV-E10 and you can really see how much it punches in even with this Sony 11 millimeter lens. Now one of the things that you have to remember is that this lens doesn't come with any type of stabilization inside of the lens. So you really are stuck with whatever stabilization you can get from a gimbal or whatever's inside of the camera. And same thing with the Viltrox lens. You can see the big difference that you get when you use active stabilization on the ZV-E10. But the Viltrox lens doesn't have any in-body stabilization either, so you're really stuck with whatever stabilization your camera offers or whatever you can get from your gimbal. Now, if you're into ND filters, the Viltrox lens has a thread size on the outside of it, which is 67 millimeters. So you're gonna wanna try to get an ND filter that's actually 67 millimeters, not really much more than that, because if you step up rings, you might see more of that vignetting effect. And the Sony lens has a thread size, which is 55 millimeters. But again, you can't really use any bigger ND filters or polarizers than 55 millimeters because if you do and you start using step up rings, you're probably gonna see some vignetting. Although you really are gonna start to see vignetting when you open the aperture all the way to f1.4 on the Viltrox or f1.8 on the Sony. In my case, I haven't really noticed much vignetting with the Viltrox lens, but I do notice it with the Sony lens. So that is something to think about when you have the aperture fully open, in the Sony's case, f1.8. But as soon as you bring up the aperture to like f2.5 or f2.8, then that vignetting clears up. So it kind of takes away from that beautiful bokeh that you can get because who wants vignetting in your shot? But it only really happens when you have a bright background, like a bright white wall or maybe overblown sky. So if you're shooting in a lower aperture with the Sony lens, just try to make sure that your background isn't that bright. I went out last night and shot some astrophotography with both of these lenses. I'm pretty sure that I got the Milky Way. For anybody out there who's an astrophotography enthusiast, please let me know in the comment section if this is actually the Milky Way. Take a look at both of these pictures to see which one you think performed better when it came to shooting in astrophotography. My ZV-E10 has never had this many lens changes in such a short amount of time during this video. My conclusion is that no matter which one of these two lenses you go for, you can't go wrong. They're both super sharp. I think when it really comes down to it, you're splitting hairs between these two. I would say the Viltrox to me is my favorite lens when it comes to wide angle lenses with the ZV-E10, so I'm gonna stick with this one. But if you ended up getting the Sony 11 millimeter F1.8, then you're gonna be just fine no matter what you're using it for because it's just a great lens. If you're into vlogging, then I would say go with the Sony 11 millimeter lens because it's so much lighter, especially once you fully extend your arm. I probably wouldn't be able to last very long if I was trying to do that all day with the Viltrox lens. And this lens is a little bit wider, so as soon as you turn active stabilization on, you can get that proper framing. Whereas when you turn active stabilization on with the Viltrox 13, the frame still might be a little too punched in for your taste. I thought it was good, but some people like to be further back. Let me know in the comment section which one of these two lenses you like better and which one you're picking up and what you're using it for because I'd be super interested to know. I'm Joe with the Film Alliance, your life coach and film professor, and until the next video, have a nice week. The ZV-E10 in your hand or whatever camera you're using because it's, it's kind of small.
But the real competitor is that the Viltrox F1. But the real competitor, um, as you saw, we're going to be vlogging with both. As you saw in the video thumbnail, we're going to be. As you saw. Oh, I forgot to do that.